Hello, I'm Marcel Ribot. I am Patricia Rodriguez. And together, we are Little, Little Soldier, Soldier Productions. Productions. We are foreign artists based in the UK. And over the last 10 years, we have made and toured work all over the world. We love it, but it's not always been easy. So we have invited our friends and collaborators who share the same passion. And we have asked them what it's like for them and how they make it happen. We want to know what gets lost in translation. What can't they travel without? And their best border control stories. Welcome to They Make It Happen, a series of online conversations about the ins and outs of making and touring work internationally. In this episode, our producer, Sarah Jane Watkinson, will be talking to Alison King and Acharte Lope de Moniain about the challenges involved in managing projects across borders. Hello, um, welcome to the final of Little Soldiers online talks. And this week it's um, international producing panel. Um, my name's Sarah Jane Watkinson, although most people call me SJ. And um, I'm the producer for Little Soldier. I am, I'm also uh, an independent producer based in Birmingham, and I work with lots of different companies, um, including um, Altered Skin here in Birmingham, uh, Sleepwalk Collective, who are between Spain and the UK, uh, The Polar Bear is Dead, which is partly in Yorkshire and partly in Milan in, in Italy, uh, and also with Paul O'Donnell in Coventry and Victoria Firth in Yorkshire. So I'm going to introduce the other two members of the panel, there's Achate and Ali, and they're going to introduce themselves as we go around. Um, hello, uh, my name is uh, Achate, and uh, I'm basically an independent producer working for many different organizations in different kinds of organizations. Uh, I guess the main work I do at the moment, or the one that takes most of my time at the moment, is a uh, beef festival. I, I, I work uh, with the B Festival team producing um, the festival. Um, I also work for other organizations, like currently I've, I've joined uh, BIDF to help them a little bit with the production of this year. But then I also work with um, uh, the Dance Association, Dance of Professional, sorry, uh, the Association of Dance Professionals of the Basque Country, uh, which yeah basically looks uh, and takes care of uh, yeah what we need in terms of the sector for um, mainly the independent sector of uh, dance in the in the context of the Basque Country. And the one the one last thing that I I do uh, recently it's uh, I'm part of the advisory group of uh, BDN the Birmingham Dance Network so those are a bit my connections uh, yeah in the context of uh, the UK and the Basque Country which is fun for me. And now Ali. Yeah, hello. Um, I'm Ali King. I run Turtle Key Arts. Uh, we're a performance arts company and we support companies to make and tour work. And um, we work with circus, dance, physical theatre and new writing companies. Um, we have had a long career producing work that's uh, both in the UK that tours nationally and internationally. Um, we have mainly in the last sort of um, five to eight years really focused on supporting our circus companies that we produce, mainly Occam's Razor to to uh, internationally. We also support some other companies to have either residences or exchanges in creating work, or even um, we support a Mickey Dance Theatre company who have gone out and helped um, other groups set up integrated dance companies. So working kind of collaboratively, both from an outreach and participation point of view, but also from uh, touring work and uh, having those connections. So we have a long um, history of touring work, both in the UK and abroad. So hopefully um, can give some helpful pointers and I've seen considerable changes in the last um, decade and a half, uh, for sure. Yeah, haven't we just? Something, <laughs> something I've just realised as we've gone around introducing ourselves that I hadn't kind of clocked when we put this panel together is that we're actually all three of us working a lot in physical theatre, dance, end of things. So uh, whilst I, do I, I work on some text-based stuff as well, but the, it seems like we're all working on a lot of physical theatre and, and or, or more the sort of dance end of things. And I'm guessing, I suppose, that that is more um, accessible and tourable in non-English speaking places or certainly easier. And is that a conscious choice for the two of you? Um, I think not necessarily a conscious choice. It is my background. It's, I mean, now my yeah. It's dance, really. I mean, and a little bit of visual arts, but mainly dance. Mm. Uh, that's what I, you know, I train in dance and um, 
and that's how I got into the performing arts world in a way and in, in, in what I do now. So, um, and it's true that in, in the different organizations that I've worked for uh, being ACT Festival, the first one, and, and then B Festival in terms of um, festivals that work more, not dance specifically, but uh, performing arts. It's true that, yeah, work that is not, uh, that doesn't have a, that is not text heavy, so to yeah. speak. Uh, yeah easier for international audiences so I guess there is a conscious choice in trying to find work that would transcend those barriers yeah but yeah yeah Yeah, I I would say very similar I mean Turtle Key Arts was founded to support young and emerging companies and to provide access to the arts so I suppose we've always been attracted to kind of I suppose more unusual art forms so Mm -hmm. you know going back to looking at physical theatre device work dance and then latterly um uh, circus and it does obviously um, we do work with text um, but it's, it's used in a very sort of devised collaborative way sometimes it's very little yeah. text yeah. and I suppose yeah I mean uh, you know it does underpin the access removing barriers um, obviously dance and circus are very visually alluring work which makes it very accessible can make mm-hmm. it very exciting to younger audiences and yeah it makes it very tourable because you are when you go to international festivals you're immediately removing that that barrier and we recently actually one of our circus companies made quite a, 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 a sort of physical theatre circus piece of work but it had autobiographical stories in it and and it really along with obviously which would come to the dreaded b word along with brexit really um sort of and covid obviously it all happened at the same time <laughs> but i think that also did cut short its touring life because it was text heavy and for some yeah. countries that is just it doesn't translate the humor the jokes the emotion yeah. you know it becomes harder so yes i think that non-verbal work makes it does make it very accessible and more appealing to international bookers and audiences yeah i think yeah i, th- I think it's possible to to tour t- text heavy or text mainly text-based work but you do have to do it really carefully uh, i remember seeing a, a piece at b festival actually sorry achate some years ago where the um it, it was I, it wasn't the festival spot it was just the the way that the captions had been done by the company yeah. were just awful it was, it was really it was really bad you couldn't mm. see them and uh, and also they weren't keeping up with the uh, they weren't keeping up with this with the actors so uh, and because i speak Sp- they were it was in spanish and because i speak spanish as well i was ju- it was actually more confusing for me because i could hear one thing being said and a different thing and then see a completely different thing and they kept going backwards and forwards and it was just awful but oh. it, it, if so if you are going to do that you have got to think really yeah. carefully yeah. like when um i went to act festival with paul o'donnell we actually as uh, paul actually spoke to Achate about the translation to make sure that the jokes and the kind of very there's some very british references in it to make sure that we've got the sort of equivalent over there and also yeah, because there's a quite a bit of humor that is at the expense of well not at the expense of spanish people it's more about daft brits abroad in, on holiday in spain but just checking that that, we, that it wasn't sounding like we were insulting spanish people no but that's a really good point that's a really good point you've made sj is that translation of humor and i think the thing that we learned is I think if you are going to take text work, I think you need to take responsibility for the captioning. Yes. If there's an ability, you know, if you do have a bilingual cast or the ability for that. I mean, when we toured a show quite a few years ago, there were members of the company that spoke different languages. So we were able to do those sort of very limited text this piece had, able to do those in the different languages, which went down very well. But I think, you know, it's that key. I think you need to take as a company if you're touring yeah. responsibility for the captioning. Yes, okay, you get the equipment maybe provided by the festival, but you need to take responsibility for managing mm. that and owning that. And then I think you can ensure that it has more success. And looking at those nuances, how does that humour translate across? Because yeah, yes, it might be very funny to a British audience, isn't going to necessarily be mm. as funny. And I think that's really important. So I think that's a really good point you've made there. Yeah. Yeah, I guess in, in the recent times and, and, you know, going back also to some shows that I've seen in, in the festival, it's, it's about thinking how that text is, it, depending what the, the show is, but it's a bit like a third performer in a way. Yeah, definitely. To yeah. Uh, include and, and it needs to play a good, a good uh, part in, in, in the show. And um, yeah, in the, in the context of the festival, it's not so much that about the text, I would say one thing that could be a barrier in terms of programming the work, but how that 
text can translate into the audiences that are going to go and see it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you say no to to work that you, that has text, but you need to imagine how that is going to translate. Uh, yeah, so. definitely. Okay, so um, uh, I think we need to do before we go any further is to talk about the dreaded B word, uh, and let's just get it out of the way because it's that thing that is just hanging over all of our work that we've all been doing for for so many years and let's just see if we can try and get through it without any expletives which is going to be difficult I know because it has just been it really has made life incredibly difficult and um, Ali what you've you've been you've been doing the most touring I think taking work to e the EU How, how's it been <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it, it has been. I mean, to give you a sort of um, example, I mean, there's two things, actually. I mean, obviously, the, you know, Brexit happening, which is something working in the arts um, and just morally and ethically did not want to see happen. Mm. Um, so it's had a huge impact. Um, it's impacted in several ways. It's obviously the added expense if you're wanting to be, if you're if you're a British company wanting to tour abroad, you've now got the added expense. Now you've got the complications. There's been various sort of um, visa waivers that the government have been forced to sort of take on because obviously mm. the logistics of actually touring work isn't practical because for the moment, some countries will, you can go there for a certain amount of time, but obviously as we all know, your summer touring map follows the festival circuit so you can't just go from France to Germany it doesn't follow like that you're going when those festivals happen at specific weekends in specific timetables so obviously that's made it very difficult because then you trigger a visa and then you come out again and you used up that allotted time so yeah we've seen it very challenging we haven't yet we've done one or two gigs um, abroad and they've been very sort of targeted and very specific I would say at the moment we're still seeing the fallout um, of European festivals wanting to kind of um, wanting to book us but wondering about those logistics mm, yeah. and then obviously I think I mean it was interesting in 2018 we made a piece of work a circus piece of work outdoor piece of work and this company has a great reputation for outdoor festivals and we went to something like 20 odd festivals in 19 um, again we did about 18 in 2020 we had eight or nine inquiries it, it really dropped off and then of course covid came so the two things mm -hmm. together have really compounded it um and so we have yet to sort of recover that level of booking um and i'm touring a piece this summer a new outdoor show and i'm really hoping i've had some interest internationally um for next year and i'm really interested to see how that works because you've got the logistics of you know at the moment you know who are you employing and where does that artist live and then how do you kind of you know move them around and ensure that you've got enough of their your time because you're not also employing them exclusively this is the other problem that we're facing you know um i will employ a performer maybe for a summer circuit from may to september um they're mostly employed with us but they do also want to go and do other gigs there might be pockets of downtime they might even want to have a holiday oh, yeah. and all of that and all of that will impact on your income um, and on that that visa allowance so yes I mean at the moment um, you know Brexit's had a profound effect it initially took once Brexit kicked in it took the rug out from our touring mm. it stopped all sort of possible touring and you had to go back to the drawing board and cost it up and it's adding at least I would say I mean it's hard to put an exact figure on but whatever you're let's say you're going to a festival for four or five days and you've got that cost you've got to be adding at least 20% onto that cost um, to cover those things. So you're looking at an extra two grand. Who 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 takes that? Does the festival take it? Does the artist wear? Now the, the agreements I had pre-COVID the festivals were making us bear that and completely fair enough that's completely mm. understandable because how are they supposed to find that additional money um, and then as I said Covid hit in 2020 so all those festivals went and as yet obviously 21 was still a write-off 22 we've actually made a piece of work deliberately to target these festivals in the UK first with a hope that we can then in 22 with a bit more breathing space get abroad again so we've seen a massive impact and the other downside as I'm sure for most artists that work in the UK um, you UK touring is subsidised by the Arts Council of England and has to be. It's the only way it financially works as a model. It's very rare to get a gig that you can, if you're a small company, that you can make financially sustain itself with the fees that the venues can pay. Mm. So international touring normally 
you know, historically has been, you know, it's a chance because you're doing several gigs and you're spending time, but it's a chance to actually, the company can earn some money that can help mm-hmm. support, um, you know, by not charging unreasonable fees, but it is actually also, as well as being obviously artistically rewarding and really important collaboratively mm-hmm. to have those, to experience those festivals and perform at them um, and to meet other artists and to see other work, to see the standard of work that's in the UK is so, uh, it, um, in Europe, it's so important for UK artists to see that, to be part yeah. of that sort of shared network, um, as well as you actually kind of can get decent fees and earn decent money. So for, for UK companies, that, that's really been taken away from them. And, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, we're still seeing that and it will be a, a harder road back um, and, and a lot of logistical and extra administration, which personally mm-hmm. we are as a production company, we're going to bear that um, because we want to tour. I hope that kind of answers sure. it so far. Yeah. And and does that extra cost is that just for the actual physical, as in money going through the bank costs, or does that factor in the the additional time that you need to put in for the extra paperwork? Or is or, yeah. No, it's a really really good question. I would say it literally is the physical cost because you've got right. to look at yeah the carnets, the visas, yeah. and then also as an awful thing as a UK based production company, it's making you think because on on paper it's actually easier. For you to then engage, um, you know, European artist for that touring because then you mm-hmm. remove an element, which is obviously not, you know, what you want to do. But then you've also got to think, yeah, it's literally covering those costs. It's, mm-hmm. it's, and also you've got to think about, you know, as I'm sure you've all done it, we've all travelled and, and sailed through Europe so easily using yeah. our phones, using our maps, and all of that's gone as well. So you're having to look at extra time for your production team to make sure that if you are touring with a van the set that you can get to the border, get your carne unlocked, mm-hmm. um, make sure that everything things safe and that you've got everything so that's an extra few days there then you've got the additional visa cost depending on the nationalities and where your your team are based and whether they're UK artists or European artists but that works both ways and then you've got additional expenditure in terms of like mobile data and things like yeah. that as well and, yeah, yeah. and health insurance as well and insurance so yeah 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 so. I- I think it's the, it's these extra costs and the extra time that I think is is going to really impact small companies and you know whereas previously you could just like you say just just nip over and it was and it was all very straightforward um, because certainly when um, Brexit was was on the horizon and when it was first happening. I went to lots of kind of advice sessions and there were people from sort of quite big organisations or orchestras or whatever going, oh, well, it'll all be fine. We, you just do the same, uh, all the same stuff as what, what you do is if you went to America or whatever, which is all lovely if you're a massive orchestra with all this, this, uh, this team and everything. But if it's, I mean, we're all just, we're all working for small organisations and we just don't have that capacity to suddenly find that well i think the other thing that it does as well i think that's the thing to sort of point out there's another good point SJ, is if we, we've toured to australia uh japan we've taken work mm. to south korea we've taken work to america when those festivals invite you they're expecting that expense exactly a large yeah. rate cost you've you've already got yeah. you know if you're going to go to australia flights you, you know the best flight you're going to find is probably a you know, thousand to fifteen hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. They're expecting that. When you've got lots of European festivals that want to include UK work, yes, those festivals, and obviously, you know, you'll be able to answer that much better than me. You, you, you know that there's going to be an additional travel cost because they are coming further than if I'm just in in France and I'm popping to Belgium. So the festivals understand that our our travel costs are more, and that's fair enough. And you quote for that because you've obviously got to get mm-hmm. ferries or you've got to have, you know, whatever you've got to drive. Like if you're driving to South, you know, for us to drive to South of France. Is two days, whatever it might be. Um, so they're expecting that, but they're not expecting those additional extra increased costs. Whereas I think if you're further afield, if you know if it's the rest of the world, mm-hmm. you're kind of expecting those costs because that's what you've always been working on. And this is a difference. So these European festivals aren't suddenly finding additional magic pots of money no. to be able to go. Okay, it always. I know it costs. If I take a UK company, it costs me. I don't know whatever a ballpark mm-hmm. figure is a thousand pounds more, a thousand euros mm. more because of travel, whatever it might be. That I understand, but you can't suddenly expect them to magically have this pot of money to cover the rest. So I think it's, yeah, it, it, it's almost that's a sort of, by those larger companies, it's almost sort of a slightly naive mm. cost because... And I think I think it's also the lead-in times as well, because I, I, one of the artists I work with, we we were just about to go to India um, just when, when COVID happened and lockdown happened, and that had been planned for absolutely 
ever yes. you know because it's yeah. India and and uh, you know because of the logistics That's and everything it. but yeah. I think festivals in Europe expect you to be you know oh, yeah. they, they don't they're not they're not contacting you 18 months no. in advance are they no not, no, not at all. <laughs> no you know that's really good I mean we went to Sydney and when we've been to other festivals further afield you're literally talking to those promoters and programmers and producers for a year yeah you know maybe longer and you're absolutely right I could get contacted where are we now mate I could get con I used to get contacted now for a festival in Europe in September or August, yeah. and you yeah, would be yeah, reacting yeah. to that. They would have yeah. seen the work, they would have come over, they would have seen the new show by Cos mm-hmm. Razor, and they would go, oh, I've got a slot left have in some, my yeah. festival, let's That's get up. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what about the other way around, Achate? How is it yeah. for you at the festival bringing people in? I was going to say, it's it's pretty much the same, but the other way around in a way. Um, it's, it's the time... You need to invest in thinking who you're going to bring, when you need to let them know. It's exactly what you say, because before it was just like as easy as, you know, like uh, even you have a cancellation and, uh, and, and you know, you, you can you can sort it out very quickly, which we've been lucky so far, I have to say. But um, um, but is the time, is, is the cost of, of that? It's having to think of a certificate of a sponsorship or whatever kind of yeah. thing. To do, and I, and I was going to say, adding to all the things that you you've mentioned, which I think we share. I mean, luckily enough, we don't really uh, program companies that have big sets generally, so we have to deal with with that side of, of things. Uh, but for example, just an, yeah, just you know, an anecdote. Uh, we do need to bring a truck uh, for the festival, and it's been a nightmare to find someone that would drive that truck to the UK because if I was only specific companies that that work with, with that special mm-hmm. or it was just like you could just contact a small company and they yeah. and now they don't do it anymore so you know mm-hmm. uh, for bigger companies that have more contacts already and they work with certain you know uh yeah it's easier but for smaller companies that need to kind of start from zero it is a big it is a big effort that really forces you to kind of reevaluate and reschedule and and and, and all and then I was going to say that there is something that goes even beyond that. It, and it's like a sense of there's, there's a thing, there's an atmosphere in terms of, of, of programming work from the UK or, or how easy it is to go to Europe, isn't it? So I think people for a bit of time kind of stopped thinking that that was a possibility. Or, yeah, definitely. You know, so that's, that's meant a stop, you know, uh, it's, gone, it's gone a bit backwards in terms of... Uh, imagining all those collaborations and ways in which we can keep working together, which probably will come back at okay. some point. But, yeah. yeah. But that, that's really, you're really right. That We, we felt that. Like we were almost embarrassed and apologetic up until <laughs> when Brexit was announced or when Brexit actually happened and you were still able to tour. Because, mm-hmm. and also some festivals are like, well, we're not, you know, you don't want to be, and it's like, no, no, we do, yeah. we do. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but you yeah. Were, you, there was this sort of, it did change the dynamic and it did change relationships. Yes, and, and that felt And that felt very sad because these are festivals and places we've been touring to and, and you know, and, and it's so important, those collaborations, you know, with you. I mean, certainly, I mean, producing sort of circus and dance companies, especially circus, the sort of skill level and, 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 and the way circus is supported in Europe. For UK artists to be able to see that work, to mm. have exchanges, to be able to engage, to see it, it's so important. And to Definitely. be included and to have a seat at the table and to have British work represented at those festivals are so important. Definitely. I, I was going to add also in terms of the team, because for example, my experience with B Festival, the team that works for B, it's been always pretty international. Mm. Uh, you know, like a mix of people. And we could just invite someone to work with us in a question of a few months and, and that was an easy thing to do. Whereas now, obviously, it becomes, you know, you really need to think about that, you need to plan it better. Yeah. So that circulation of professionals becomes more difficult. Um, yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Okay, well, um, now we've got that out of the way. <laughs> mm. let's, uh, let's maybe, if we can have a think about the differences between producing and touring between the UK and the EU. This is more for people who have not been, um, who have not toured um, abroad before or have not brought European artists over. What are, the di- what are the differences in how things are run here? I mean, Ali already mentioned that we have the, you know, the, that we have the Arts Council supporting, um, uh, that is more or less inevitably going to be supporting tours. And I, I've noticed when I when I um, 
uh, work in Spain, you know, the, there's a, an, out, an expectation that they will pay quite often that they will pay like travel and things like that. Whereas venues here, if you're booking an international company, it doesn't matter. They're still expecting, and for, certainly for studio venues, they're expecting that to be part of the, they're, they're not expecting to pay that on top unless it's, unless it's to a festival, say, for example. Mm. Are there any, are there any um, other uh, differences that, you, that would be useful for people doing this for the first time? Yeah, I think for the first time, I think if you're, um, if you're touring in the UK, I think um, you do need to, as you said, you need to present a venue with a complete package. So you're presenting yeah. with one price that covers everything. You also need to be, I think, from a, from a company point of view, very prepared to provide and support with all those marketing materials as well. Definitely. So that's great. And you're going to have to actively be promoting your show and finding ways to sort of help sell it. I think if you're a UK company invited to a festival, depending on the nature of the festival, obviously you send them marketing materials, but I found that there's a real... Um, you know machine and want you know want to have you they've invited you you're part of a festival Mm -hmm. and um, without you know I I love UK theatres and have wonderful partnerships with many venues but European um, you know venues and festivals do that side of it really well and so I think if your company going from the UK to to Europe I think you you are you're going to provide a price that's your fee and then your travel's often paid separately and that's to do with how the venue um, invoices and their own tax status so that's quite important to be able to work that out and often you will find as well again if you're coming to the UK or you're touring the UK the accommodation the subsistence everything you need to sort out yourself so you are self-sufficient whereas when you go to your often the accommodation is provided um, there's often the venues or the festivals have catering which is something that we often don't have here in the UK we do in festivals but not so much in venues they have catering so you're often fed you're often looked after and you're often housed um, and that so that also then will come out of your budget so it's being aware of they're the sort of from a producer point of view they're the differences that you will face um, so you're sort of going to almost have sort of two two fees and sort of two tech specs, if you like, a tech spec of everything you need, imagining you're completely self-sufficient in the UK to, you know, this is our tech spec. Um, and, you know, and then obviously the venue or festival might be well providing you with accommodation um, and, and food. And then therefore that would then you need to reflect that and how you contracted your performers. Um, and I think also, again, I think with your coming to that side of it, technically, I think again in the UK, UK, um, you know, of, often venues, you know, unless it's a mid or large scale venue, won't, you know, will have larger teams. But a studio theatre here will be one or two technicians at best. So again, yeah. you need to make sure that you've got enough technical support. When you go abroad, you will often find that the the, the sort of theatres and festivals are very well staffed and subsidised, mm. and therefore you will often see an increased time. So you may need less getting time abroad than you do, obviously, um, when you're getting into the UK because you've simply got more resources mm. and then finally I would say if possible have your text back in English but if it is possible to have it translated that can be really definitely helpful because, because yeah. often technicians you know why should they um you know English isn't their first language obviously um, but they may not you know speak and that will help clear up so you send the English one and the French or German or you know whatever language it might be and that can be really helpful and I would also say definitely definitely if you're going abroad to have a well now you can have a zoom in the past used to be a Skype have a zoom with that technician have a really clear conversation and if you've got someone um available that is bilingual can speak that language it's really really helpful especially if you've got a particularly complicated show technically yes if it's not so complicated then it's fine but I that's sort of my 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 experiences and 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 then just lastly on a very very practical basis allowing you know you know never making sure that you know if you're a new producer to this that your team all arrive the day before you know there isn't there <laughs> yes. isn't, you're never arriving on the day of your show because because planes and more so now planes get delayed trains get delayed and we're seeing get more, held up. yeah yeah we're seeing more of that so i would absolutely have them arriving a day mm. possibly i would at the moment be going for a day and a half before but yeah but certainly definitely. the day before any sort of get in or any sort of thing like that and, and, and lastly, just if you're a producer and, and you are engaging with a festival venue for the first time, do budget yourself, both sides, UK and, and, and Europe, to go so you can meet the directors, find out if there's any sort of networking events or any sort of welcome events. You know, we're going to a festival next this weekend in Grimsby, but there's a welcome event on the Friday, so I'm going to it because it's really good, especially if you're starting out, to be able to make those connections. 
I hope that's useful, that sort of those. Yeah. Things. And what about that was very comprehensive, Ali. What about <laughs> you, Atasi? When um, what are the what are the things that um what are the things that you struggle with most when you're because quite often the companies that you're bringing over to B Festival are fairly, you know, some of them are quite well known, but some of them they're they're, mm. they're not so established. Well, I mean, well, I think I have to say that sometimes they're, they're not so established because they're starting and so excited to be part of. Yeah. <laughs> And I think it's about managing that expectation. Uh, it's as yeah. you, you said, I think it's about understanding where you're going and how things work there in terms of funding, for example, how are theatres and festivals funded uh, in relation to your own country. So, for example, as you were saying, in Spain, companies would expect to get a higher fee because they pay more and would provide with, with more things. Um, but then the UK works a bit different, so the fees might not be as high. Um, and obviously, it really depends on the on the type of place you go into, what kind of festival and what venue you go into. Bigger venues will have more support for some things. Uh, and um, so, yeah, I think it's about doing a good research about where you're going. And um, um, but yeah, I would say that that's one one thing. I think it's, I guess, be festival in the way it's been before had a very particular way of like a very particular structure where taking time was very reduced. Mm -hmm. so managing that and yes. It, you said you didn't convince people that everything is going to be okay yeah <laughs> but that's the nature of festivals isn't it you know you have to have a very quick turnaround and that's just how it is yeah about that conversation that you were saying is it's you really you know make sure that you have that conversation because mm -hmm. i decide there's a person that will mm -hmm. make your work better yeah. and help yeah. you so something yeah. that Ali mentioned, which uh, which I've I've come across quite a bit, is about marketing, and um, the differences in what people are what what marketing departments here expect from uh, from companies. Like I always do, like an entire marketing pack with you know messages and different versions of copy and things like that. Um, and I know, whereas I think European companies have this kind of like a, a dossier that's kind of you know much more detailed about the show itself yeah but it's 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 told from a programmer's point of view and I I uh, was invited to ACT Festival in Bilbao a few years ago to run a workshop on on producing British style to sort of you know because they felt that there were some of the things that we do here that people would would benefit from and one of the things was about the marketing and I got everybody to do an elevator pitch of their own show and even the people within the same company to to then pitch it to each other because what I put them in pairs and then I swapped them around and got them to pitch the, the show to each other and then and then pitch it back to each other so it was kind of like well, was that the show that you pitched? And it was like, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was also, it was to make sure that, yes, people could summarise what the show was really quickly, but also so that people within the same company were on the same page. Because, you know, that people were, I was speaking to two or three different people from the same company and they were all saying completely different things about it. But also um, one of the things that I'd, would, I'd got them to, I talked about in my presentation was about doing, you know, 50 words of copy, 100 words of copy and 500 words of copy for different, you know, for different things. And they were saying, well, which one of these do you send to the, to the venue? And I said, well, all of them. And they went, wow, can you, can you do that? You know, well, yeah, of course you can. And actually you're helping them because one of them was complaining that they'd sent the, the, their copy to the festival and they, they said they used the wrong thing but then he showed me what he'd sent and he, honestly it was five pages of teeny tiny like very very deep <laughs> thoughts yeah. about you know yeah. the making of the work there mm. was nothing like come and see the show because it's like you know about da -da -da, you know and and mm. they and he was just absolutely mm. stunned that you could actually mm. and I said well how did they know for out of all of that text, what what you want to highlight and let's yeah. tell them. <laughs> That's a good yeah, you're right. We 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 give very oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. No, I was gonna say that in the festival we we see that a lot. And uh, and I think it's also something about the context. And the the context of the UK, it's it's also quite if I think of how um work is promoted in in other in, in, in the Basque country, which is what I know most, or or in, in Spain. Um there is a difference uh, and it's because maybe there's still more work that is shown for um, for the sector, so to speak. Um, 
Whereas here, you really need to keep in mind how accessible what you're writing is. And I think not many people are aware of that. And in dance, mm -hmm. I mean, we really like to talk about how deep our thoughts are when we're creating the show. But then it's like, what, <laughs> to, to, what do they need to expect? Um, so I think that's a good point uh, where people really need to think. Also, you have to kind of think of where you're going again. It's about understanding a bit the context and making sure that you do have something that is easy to read. But and also the fact that the programmer is not just it here, I mean, is not just thinking about what the work you know about the content of the work they're thinking how they're going to sell it and who the audience yeah, is and yeah. so you need to help them to know who that audience is it's all it's all very fascinating that you've done all this research on whatever but uh, but that's not going to get bums on seats no I, th I think we we approach it in the UK much more in in bums on seats so mm -hmm. uh, as, as yeah. companies we're kind of almost like you know kind of taught or learned by process that actually yeah. it's like what's what's going to sell your show we found in Europe we've actually been asked for more creative content content we've often been we, we give very clear marketing materials yeah exactly like sj that 50 word that 100 word that 200 we've sometimes been asked for more uh work you know around the process so yeah. when we're performing at, at venues rather than in festivals yes it's going into a big program you need to stand out but but we've been asked for much more and i think that's it i think sort of you know generally i mean don't want to generalize but i think in europe it, they are more focused on the art itself and yeah. we are we are we are coming at it from a different angle and i think you know the key words that that said that you, you you said was about that doing that research of where you're going I think is mm -hmm. key and and yeah I was going to add if you're in a festival then from a technical point of view yeah it, you know find out if you're a new producer are you sharing the stage with someone mm -hmm. you know are you you know what's your get in time slot because you know obviously we have that you know coming up with circus companies you know how mm -hmm. you know what we're going to do how you're going to slot on and the same for dance is there something that's you know massively technical or based just before your dance show you know so yeah I think that was to add to that I thought that's really good point yeah. yeah check check who who else is following you and are you sharing a space I think that's really key yeah yeah I was just going to add something about the oh, about the uh, marketing side of things about images as well because um, <laughs> I think people uh, coming to the UK as well quite often don't have like you know show images they'll have production shots and uh, and I've quite often been faced with a whole row of just people holding microphones and it's not and it's just not interesting, uh, you know. And I remember one of the shows I went to see at ACT, actually, they had a really striking image in the middle of the show. And I said, why didn't you use that as your as your image for the show? And they said, yeah, but that would have given it all away. I said, yeah, but it would also have made people want to come and see it. <laughs> you know, because literally their, their show image was three people standing in a row holding a microphone, not even in costume. And it, I just wondered why on earth they'd done that, but, <laughs> but still. Um, is there anything else to that about, because we've, we've talked quite a bit about people bringing their work to the UK, but what about... Um, OK, uh, we lost the Chante there for a minute. Um, so she's had to move to a different thing, a different spot. So she's got another interesting um, background there. But just to um, to wind up that bit about the differences between producing and touring between the UK and the EU, I was just wondering if there were any differences or, or issues when um, communicating with um, theatres and festivals abroad and maybe things that you've found out the hard way as you've gone along. Yeah, I would say it all lies in the technical information. I yeah. think it, you've got to be really clear. So as a producer, you need your technical team to be, you know, realistic, to provide detailed plans, especially if you're needing a certain height or mm. a certain width or depth. You've got to be really clear in that communication and, and make it really clear that that is non-negotiable because the piece doesn't work. So mm. we've definitely we've definitely had some uh, tough lessons there where it's not been maybe clear enough in the tech spec or, you know, mm. there's been a language communication. I think that's really key. I think it's that, the sort of what the show needs technically and then the amount of time you actually need. Because obviously, like, you know, there's a real desire when you get invited to a festival to say, yeah, 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 we could do it. <laughs> and absolutely, you, you should have an absolute can-do attitude as a producer. But you've got to bear in mind what are the realistic parameters that your show needs. Because, you know, if, you know, that, you know, can you share your space with someone else? 
you know, is, is your show messy? Is it, what are you doing pre and post? All those things. So I think it's just really clear around the technical information. And I think it's being really clear about with the, when you're going abroad, exactly who needs to go, what their roles are, um, and, and that expectation. So, and, and making the roles very, very clear. So, because often as well, when you suddenly get a wonderful international opportunity, the world and its wife wants to join in. And, um, <laughs> and, that's, and that's not, you know, that's not, that's not actually fair on the festival or on the company. No. So I think it's being really clear about who's in the traveling party, what their roles are and technically what you really need. And then make sure I'd say as well, I think the difference is, I think if you're a UK company going abroad, you know, as, 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 um, as, uh, you know, Charles, they said, do your research, um, know where you're going, know something about the town or village you're going to, and then also be really, um, yeah, be be representative of, of kind of British UK work. You know, you're mm. kind of, you know, you may be the only British UK company that's been asked as part of the festival, you know, so mm. make sure that you represent and maybe don't be the last ones in the bar. That would be my <laughs> Messages, don't be the last one drinking all the all the free wine at, at, at the last knocking. But but on a serious note, yeah, be you know you might be the only British company, so so you know, uh, uh, yeah, what can you see? And I'd say also, if you are part of a festival and you're a new producer or company, go and see other work. You know, take that opportunity, definitely. Um, you know, yeah, and definitely. really make those connections and network. But yeah, they would be my things. Yeah. And what about you, Charte? Yeah, I was going to say thinking the other way around. Actually, uh, one thing that obviously the technical side of things um have a good comprehensive video uh of, of what you're doing so so you know anything that you might have skipped in your in your tech specs uh can be spotted uh in in that um but then also one thing that has happened the other way around from people coming from europe to the uk it's been for example warning triggers and what you understand this yes. for audiences and things like that. Um, and then also, if you're using anyone, for example, we have had companies touring Europe, or Spain in particular, using uh, underage uh, performers. So if there's anything like that that you're thinking of doing, again, do research and make sure that, that it's being communicated soon enough because you might need permits or you not, might need you know certain type of contracts or things that you might need to put in place. Um, and uh, yeah, and depending on the venue, it can, it can be quite tricky. Um, I could say the one thing that is a bit different in terms of the UK is that obviously the UK, the model is a lot or is very focused on engagement and participation, which, you know, is not so much uh, in other places. Take the advantage of that because there's not many work doing well, you know, well-developed in that sense. So that's one thing I think uh, the UK um, and British artists do great. Uh, and I think that's one thing that uh, it's yeah, worth uh, shouting about. And the last thing I would say, make sure you contact artists because the artists know a lot about what's going on in their own Mm -hmm. area and they can be a great source of information and um, mm -hmm. and possible future collaboration so I think that's another thing to look at not only look at programmers and venues that might mm -hmm. you know program you but also think of peer colleagues that can give you a lot of information and support I think definitely the content is something to to think about I mean what um, what is acceptable in some countries in is not acceptable in others I had a show come to the UK that had been to the UK and then went away and then came back again. And in the intervening time, there was a bit of nudity had slipped in, but they'd forgotten to mention that. And uh, so uh, the first show of the tour had a bit of an eyeful and a bit of a shock. And I had to do some very rapid ringing rounds just to make sure that everybody was all fine and hunky-dory about that because yeah, it, wasn't, I, it wasn't on the marketing. I had a company forgetting to tell me that, they forgot to tell me that they use a gun on stage. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> wow. to travel with a gun. So, you know, things like that, uh, yeah, that yeah. you just need to make sure that, yeah, that you keep just, those. Just little things like that. Something that I wish happened is could we have somebody translate theatrical terms just a piece of a4 you know so what is stage left in french or yeah or german or whatever yeah. because there's yeah, always yeah, a thing yeah. isn't there there's yeah. always a thing and what do we mean i mean i've had i've had so much like who's left your left my left yeah, whatever left yeah. you know because that's why we say stage left yeah. and stage yeah. right uh, i think in spain yeah. it's actors right and actors left mm -hmm. isn't it in, yeah. in france isn't yeah, it court and garden or have i just made that up um, I think that's something to do with Versailles. They say court and garden. Ah, might be. I, I think believe. also, actually, on that note, be aware of some countries are two-hour lunch. 
Yes. Hey, I, was gonna say- yeah, I was going to literally, so for a UK company going abroad, you've got this really tight schedule and suddenly it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's amazing. You know, you go to an incredible restaurant and get fed, but suddenly you're not working for two hours. Two hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like exactly the same. This is something that we have to deal with. Like, make sure that there's going to be two hours in the day when you won't be able to do practically anything. So count on that, and count also on a massive meal when you go to the Basque Country. Yeah. That might yes. <laughs> have enough when you shouldn't have. With but, yeah. wine as well at lunchtime. With wine, yeah. We, yeah, we, during we, the tech. Yeah, during the tech, yeah, yeah, civilized. Everyone, <laughs> everyone was drinking wine, and we were like, oh, okay. <laughs> But okay, <laughs> well, it's you know, we're, um, I'm I'm sure everybody's going to think it's a hoot now going abroad, and everybody's everyone, all the UK companies are all going to be working out how they can get these gigs in the Basque Country mm. but, <laughs> with long long boozy lunches. But um, okay, before we uh, finish off, well, um, there's a few practical things I thought it'd be good to talk about. Um, firstly, are there any interesting European festivals or networks mm. that you could recommend? Uh, yeah, I mean, depending on the work, I mean, there's certainly a lot of um, uh, great um, circus sort of festivals where you can go and showcase your work. Um, Freiburg in Germany, uh, Ypres in, in Belgium, obviously. Um, there's obviously other sort of circus networks, Cirque Strad in uh, Rotterdam. Um, that sort of is your sort of circus. Um, there's also kind of a connection of sort of outdoor festivals, um, network where you can take that opportunity so even if you're whatever work you're making is outdoors connect with outdoor arts uk which will then connect you to international kind of links and, and partners as well i think they're really good to sort of plug into that sort of um uh, outdoor work um in terms of inside venues there are some it's interesting if again as i think you were saying it Ajante, if you you know, if you go to one venue, actually, sometimes it talks the venue because they might hook you up yeah. with another venue in another part of the country. Um, that certainly happens quite a lot in Sweden and other countries where you can get then go to one or two others. So it's worth talking to both the venue and the promoter or whoever it might be and see if you can get that connection as well when you're touring. Um, and what about you, Achate? Yeah, um, so... I've got someone talking in the background. Um, yeah, um, just picking up on what you said about about uh, talking to um, other, to venues to see if they've got all the venues that might. I think that's also something important to think about. That goes a bit back to maybe things we were talking about before. That it's always easier for 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 venues and and festivals maybe to program work that isn't on a tour, which is what you would do in the UK if you come. So I think that's also uh, yeah, a very important point. And in terms of, of, of interesting festivals, I have to say for emerging companies, obviously I need to name Art Festival in Bilbao. This is uh, very dear to me because that's where I started working as a producer and in many other ways. And I think it's a great uh, way of connecting and just having a great time and seeing crazy work and it and is a great festival it's, and it's and Bilbao is a great city to 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 visit yeah. yeah I think that's one that I would recommend chasing and then um in terms of uh, and, and it's also in a way it was very connected to with the festival of course and the model of the festival kind of grew from from that from that same uh, it's about creating that kind of temporary community uh, where people will spend enough time to really meet each other. Um, and I think that's really important when you're starting to make work because that's where a lot of things happened and, and collaborations and information. That's yeah. where the information grows. Um, and then uh, there's loads of, loads of great places. Um, so theater is also another, another festival, but it's maybe not so much for emerging companies, but it's a great source of you know new languages in Rome, um, the short festival in Rome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, another work because I was doing a bit of research about this. So fast for a festival in Germany, it's great. Um, also residency places. There's this place in Denmark, Bora Bora Residency, uh, where they also have international um, uh, companies having you know staying there to work. Um, uh, I don't know, Seismograph is also an outdoors festival that maybe you know about, Ali, that it's really good in Catalonia. Uh, they do, you know, it's a great, great um, work. And then I guess once you start looking at a festival, check if they've got partners, because yeah. normally 
there is a lot of European networks yeah, that they yeah, are part yeah. of. And that okay. is again of yeah. you know, places and projects that you don't know about that. Yeah, and, and definitely try to go to them yourself as yeah. a producer, because I found that I went to one thing in Barcelona yeah. And then the next thing I know, I've met, I've met these people and, I, you know, and particularly in, in Catalonia, because there's quite a network of festivals and venues that, that accept international work or, or are actually looking to promote Catalan yeah. work abroad. And because they've got funding to promote Catalan language and, and culture abroad. So there's, there's potential for sort of reciprocal things, but there's, yeah. Uh, there's FIT Festival in, in yeah. Tarragona. There is uh, Tenete TNT in, yeah. in Terrassa, which is a fantastic festival. And it's, it's been one of the most painful things of the last couple of years to not be able to go to that for the first time in ages. It's such a great festival yeah. and really, really lovely uh, town to, to go to as well. Terrassa near, not too far from, from Barcelona. But there's, um, but there's quite, you know, it, and those those people that I've met there have been have been really instrumental in in helping me make international connections, yeah, yeah. and not just We've in also, Spain. No, exactly. We've also got Avignon is quite useful as well. If yeah. you're, you know, that's really good. You've got off Avignon, which will give you a great sort of yes. stepping stone and links. Mm. I mean, obviously, we should mention it. I know there's a massive cost implication, but as a mm. UK or international artist, if you can get um, you know, yourself in or supported to get into um, the Edinburgh Showcase, you know, Edinburgh, rather, Edinburgh Festival. And then now is that Horizon Showcase, which is certainly um, worth, because obviously Edinburgh Festival, I think, you know, will be back this year in more in its previous formats. That's a great opportunity to be seen and to have your work known and to mm. start making those connections as well, you know, which is really important. Definitely. And there is this one festival also in Berlin called Lucky Truma, uh, who, uh, programs very very short shows like you can even present an idea of 10 minutes there it's a dance it's more dance uh, focused yeah and i don't know how much what the, the support they can give you is but it's a great it's a great platform also uh to meet people and spend some time in berlin um <laughs> i think i mean i could keep going but yeah sure, uh, sure. on the move uh maybe we can talk about it later you can ask just want to give a quick mention to a few things over on this, over on the UK side, because there will be people watching, yeah. uh, watching this that are not based in the in the UK. Um, there is B Festival in in Birmingham or in its new um, and its its new versions, but there's also Gift in Gateshead, Gateshead International Festival of Theatre. That's in May each year. Um, there's Lift, <laughs> London yeah. International Festival of Theatre, but that's a much kind of more bigger scale thing. And same like Manchester International Festival. Um, and they tend to be more about they tend to do the looking rather than, you know, they then tend to curate it rather than you apply to be a part of it. Um, but uh, Jackson's Lane in in London is now reopened and there's a very much an international and very circus focused um, venue. I think there's been a bit of a hiatus here in the UK. There were a few sort of international things getting moving, like Beef Festival, like Flair in Manchester and things like that. But I think there's been a bit of a hiatus, but hopefully um, as COVID um, becomes less of an issue and also as people get their head around the obstacles that, um, the, that Brexit has put in the way, hopefully as people get their heads around those, um, the international work will, um, and people bringing international work here. Although I think there is still a bit of a, a kind of um, an ideological barrier to, to get across in that a lot of programmers see international work as being difficult, you know, but, but, you know, to, you know, linking back to what we were saying about, you know, thinking about their audience and stuff, they're assuming that they're, it's going to be hard work. <laughs> and, you know, so it, it, that's another um, plea to make your work as easy, at e the, 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 the information that you send about your work, I mean, to, to be as easy to understand and as accessible and as attention grabbing as is possible. So just before we finish, are there any um, support and funding opportunities outside um, of the UK that it would be useful to point people towards? 
I think it just mentioned, I think On The Move has a lot of information about, you know, uh, funding for travel, for collaboration with certain countries or young athletes. I think it's it's a great, so I definitely think, you know, people sign up in that because uh, they do they do a great job in communicating about any opportunity in, mm-hmm. in, in all senses. Um, and to be honest, in my side of things, and in the, I, I think again, you need to do a lot of research. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any specific yeah. uh, because it's a lot about, yeah. And again, if you if you find someone that you can talk to in terms of artists, they are a great source of information. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I was going to say if you're if you're really um you know if you're an artist or producer sort of watching this, I think if you've got companies that your work is similar to or that you admire, um it's worth looking on their website, where have they been, what festivals mm. and venues have they been to in Europe, if you're a mm. British company, um, and then looking those festivals up, finding their timelines, finding the venues, getting in contact, which will because there are lots of European venues that offer residences and then small pots of money. And the same if you're, you know, if you're you know, in the EU and you're keen to come to the UK, who are those companies in the UK that your work might be a similar style or genre to? Again, where are those companies? It's all available on people's websites. Get in touch with those artists, ask, and you can really, really find out. I was going to add for dance, actually, that people, dance, certainly emerging dance companies, should look at the place resolution and look at that, <laughs> um, being able to apply for that to come yeah, in. Um, obviously, the um, the Birmingham International Dance Festival is going to happen. There's delegates that come to that mm-hmm. and have a look. Um, and definitely if you're making any work that's outdoors definitely look at the Without Walls Consortium in the Outdoor Arts UK because there's many festivals in the UK that do programme work both in and outdoors around the summer sort of seasons that's worth looking at. And to add a tiny little bit if you're thinking of starting moving abroad a a great way of knowing where you're going and of knowing people is applying for residencies Yeah. Um, so that's also a very good way of starting to know what's going on and being out there without necessarily be constantly, you know, chasing programmers of venues. Maybe there's a, a, a earlier step where that is worth uh, thinking about. And for, for UK companies and artists, of course, the new um, Arts Council priorities does have a strong strand of international work, which I'm assuming is is in response to, to Brexit and to try and support yeah. people in um, making making it possible for them to take their work abroad, but also to work with inter- international artists, you know, bringing artists, specific artists for specific roles. There are each, uh, each country usually has its own version of the British Council um, where, the, where you can do that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, with Little Soldier, we've had funding in the past from PISE, which is um, a, a sort of an, an off, a, a fund within Acción uh, Cultura Española, which is the sort of Spanish Arts Council, mm-hmm. and and that's uh, paid for the Spanish performers uh, some of their travel expenses wow. and things like that. Um, but I know in the Basque Country there's uh, Japare, and also in uh, Catalonia there there is um, Ethec, which is both both organisations are about promoting Basque and Catalan language and culture abroad. So you can quite often find ways of funding, if not the whole company to tour, but certainly if you're working internationally, including a, a Catalan or Basque artist in your in your work, you can um, bring them over. And then if you're looking at touring a whole thing like this. Um, uh, countries have, like I say, the their own equivalent of the British Council, like the Goethe Institute in Germany, for example. Yeah. So, I think um, is it unless there's anybody's got anything else extra they want to add as a kind of a round off. Uh, I think just good luck. Don't yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, um, I know. Um, I think there is a way through um, all Brexit and the complications. So I'd say to anyone yeah. watching this, good luck. Don't give up. Um, it's fantastic to take work abroad and to be part of festivals and to have that cultural and artistic exchange and experience. And also European companies, please still bring your work to the UK. Yes, definitely. And, um, we, we really do welcome you with yeah. open arms. So I, I'd say, yeah, good luck and, and don't give up. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it's like changing times. And I think, uh, yeah, it's just take the opportunity of that. But don't, yeah, don't dream in that you can actually, yeah, show your work. Uh, please keep keep trying because that's yeah. what isolate yourself <laughs> yeah I mean it, it has been a battering couple of years hasn't it with there's no doubt about that it's been it, it's been epic but mm. hopefully we're coming we're starting to come out of that now and as more and more people take 
their work um, out of uh, out of the UK and, and vice versa. People will work out all the wrinkles and stuff in this in the system, and you know, and we're a collaborative lot. I mean, you know, we've all all three of us have been in touch with each other, sort of picking each other's brains and working out what we need to do next and things like that. So. Um, uh, so yeah, p please keep on keeping on and don't be put off by us lot mo moaning about it because it's uh, it's it is it is a fantastic opportunity to work internationally. Yeah. So I think um, I think that's it for for this week's um, episode. Um, thank you very much to uh, Achate and to Ali for joining us. It's been really really fantastic and interesting talking to you both. And um, good luck and yeah. keep on keeping on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Good luck. Yeah, to both of you. And um, thanks very much for, for having us on it today. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.